What's up YouTube? It's Chris with Murphy Firearms Training. This is something I've been wanting for a while. Got my hands on it recently. Wanted to show it off. Really, really happy with this gun. If you're not sure, if you've never seen one of these, this is a Springfield trap door. And I have looked for years to find one that was in shooting condition where everything worked. Uh, I, I'm not a collector. I'm a shooter, but I do like old guns, and I want to show you this gun. So first things first, it does have the Springfield Eagle, U.S. Springfield. It is a model 1884. The trapdoor mechanism, the way it works, you pull it to half cock. You raise up on this little lever right here, and it springs up. When you open it all the way to here, you're going to see this little peg. This is going to activate your ejector. You hear it snap. Okay. I'm going to show you how that functions in a minute. This is Generation 2 of the U.S. military's breech loading rifle. Gen 1 was the 1873. So this is the 1884. This is Gen 2. And you breech load your cartridge into here. You got this little peg here. This is a solid metal peg. I'm going to show you what that's for in a minute. Nice hole for it to go over. You close this, and what happens, your firing pin is poking out here. When you close this, that cartridge actually resets this firing pin. Then you pull it to full cock, and you fire. That's it. And so we went from muzzle loaders to that. And I'm going to show you a few features, and then I'm going to work the action for you. First of all, it is a long gun. I mean, it is a long, long, long gun. Uh, I've not measured this barrel, but I think it's like 30 or 32 inches. It is a long gun, long stock. The stock is stamped U.S. with the numbers 32 and 43. And if you look very carefully, you can see where the stock used to say 32 and 43. And one of the reasons I got a really good deal on this gun is because someone sanded the stock down and refinished it. So there used to be over here, you can make out the faint, faint, faint where it used to be. There used to be a cartouche here. Okay. Used to be a cartouche here. And that's where you've got your maker stamp of who made this gun and all of that. And it's, it's, very, very, very faintly visible, but it's pretty much gone. Someone sanded this down and refinished it, and when they did, it lost a lot of collector's value. I could care less. I wanted a shooter, okay? Not a great, great condition. You know, the bluing's been gone for a while in some parts. There's some parts that have some surface rust, and I've cleaned those up and oiled them. You've got a cool hidey hole in the butt, Okay, so this little deal here swivels. It's really hard to open. Um, by the way, this gun was made in the late 1880s. So, I mean, you're looking at a gun made like 1887, 1888. Um, so the fact that it shoots at all is amazing to me. Love it. But you got this little hidey hole. People could keep who knows what. Um, patches, cleaning rods, cleaning equipment, something like that in there. Uh, just a little hole in the butt that you could keep stuff. Okay. It's got a uh, really neat sight system. So this sight is your rear sight, and this is designed for close engagement. But then when I come up here really, really close, you're going to see all these marks. Okay, so you see this little arrow is pointing here at the two. This little arrow is pointing at the two. Okay, that means this sight is currently set for 200 yards. Okay. 200 yards. Okay? That's kind of cool. Now watch. Flips up. Okay? So inside of 200 yards, you used this sight laid down like that. Beyond that, you flipped it up. And you've got a little tension screw here. I'm going to lay it down so you can see how the tension screw works. You loosen the screw. And this bad boy, and it won't do it laying down, slides. So I'm going to come in and set it here. And I want you to look. I've got that arrow on the 7. So when I flip that up, I'm going to look through 
that triangle all the way to this front sight, all the way to the front sight, and that's a 700 yard sight. And you've got this little notch. Let me grab my pointer here. You've got this little notch right here, and that's your rear sight, that little notch right there. That's your rear sight. You look through to your front sight. Now, you also have a peep sight. So that arrow at the 7 is for the notch, and that arrow at the 6 is a peep sight. And you can use either one of those that you need to use. So that is pretty slick. You've got an adjustment where you can use either of those sights. And if you look, this sight goes all the way out if you're using the triangle to 1,400 yards. 1,400 yards. That is pretty slick. So anyway, all of that works, and all of that is in working condition, and that's pretty neat to me. And I'm pretty psyched about that. It works pretty well. So it's kind of a neat sight system. I'm trying to shore up my camera. It keeps shaking every time I pick the gun up, but we're not going to be able to do that today. The second thing you've got is you've got this little dial at the back. It's really hard to see. But I'm going to see if I can get up here. There's a notch right here. There's a notch right here. I'm going to show you that notch. Okay. See that notch there right at the back of the sight? There's a notch. Okay. I got this screw here. And check out what it does. Okay. If I've got this sight flipped up, check out what it does. It actually adjusts the rear sight. For windage. And so if you've got someone spotting for you, you can actually adjust for windage on the fly with this knob here. So this knob is your elevation, and you adjust that like so. And this knob is your windage. Now I'm just going to be honest with you, for something that is give or take about 140 years old, that's really, really cool. So you've got a windage and elevation knob on a iron sight, and that's just unheard of nowadays. Um, the other thing I will mention just that's cool about this rifle, and it's really a lot of older rifles is really cool, is just how thin, I'm going to put my hand under there so it'll focus, look how thin that front sight is. I mean, it is really, really thin, and that's really cool. If you sight this gun, I mean, the front sight is so thin, it makes it, like, deathly accurate. I mean, deathly accurate. Now, let's go through loading and unloading. So, I have got a bag of dummies here, and these are my dummies that I use when I train folks, because you shouldn't use live ammunition um, if, if you have dummies available. And especially shouldn't use live ammo with beginners, okay? Um, and even experienced shooters, you know, dummies are always a good idea. That's for sure. Now, here we go. Here's our trap door. So we got our trap door open and set up and ready to go. We drop this in here and we push it forward, okay? So drop it in, push it forward. There we go. Now we're going to close our block. Notice the firing pin sticking out. Okay, when you let this hammer down, bam, it's going to hit the primer. It's going to ignite the round. Big boom, because it is a 4570. Pull that to half cock. We're very, very, very in a hurry to get that next round off. Remember, this is a military rifle. Pull that back. Flip this up. When you get to that point where it activates your ejector, boom. So what happens is when this thing kicks this round back, it hits this ramp. And that's what this is. This ramp is designed to make this cartridge fly out. So I'm going to show you one more time. Close your block, pull your hammer back, fire your gun, pull it back, boom. It hits that little ramp, and it kicks this cartridge out. Out of the way, 
ready for the next round. So you're not trying to dig a cartridge out of this recess in the heat of battle. It's a really ingenious design. And like I said, the block itself actually activates that ejector. So there sits the ejector. When you activate the block, when this flat gets here, it just clicks it and slings around out. It's a really cool design. There is a disadvantage to it because it is relying solely on this hinge. It is a very weak design This in this little wimpy clip here. And so it can't handle a very high pressure round. It was designed for the original 4570 in black powder. And as long as you keep your loads to those levels, you can shoot this gun. Don't have to load them with black powder. You can load them with smokeless. There are reloads designed for this gun that use smokeless powder, but they are black powder loads. I urge you, if you ever come across one of these and you buy one, make sure whatever you put in it says for trap doors only, okay? Or safe for use in trap doors. Safe for use in trap doors. If it doesn't say safe for use in trap doors, please don't put it in a trap door because there's a good chance this giant block of steel comes back at your face if you do. So anyway, kind of a neat gun. Like I said, the marks on the stock, I hope these are coming across in the video. They're very faint. You hold it at just the right angle. You can feel them where they used to be. Your thumbnail will catch. It says 3245 here. Um, the cartouche was here. And hopefully that's coming across on the camera there. Um, kind of a neat thing. Um, I don't care that those marks are missing. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, like I said, for me, it's a shooter. The rifling is intact on this gun. A lot of these guns uh, from age um, really are smooth bore at this point. This one still has all three lands and grooves. So it is a three groove rifle. At least that's what it looks like when I look down the bore. And they're intact. It had some surface rust, but there's no pitting. And uh, it shoots fairly well. So anyway, kind of a neat gun. And um, thought I'd show it to you guys. Does in fact have, uh, there's your rear sling swivel. And there's your front sling swivel. You've got this groove here for a cleaning rod. Okay, not for a ramrod, but for a cleaning rod. Because this shot a black powder cartridge. So a cleaning rod actually came under the barrel to swab it after shooting. And then you've got up here, this is your bayonet lug. So this, this, all this wonderful spot here is for your bayonet. So this is what's holding your bayonet on, okay? So kind of neat, uh, kind of a cool gun, and uh, did not come with a bayonet, did not come with a cleaning rod, but um, I don't really care. Uh, and again, that reduces the value, but for me, the value is to actually have a shooter. And this is a shooter. I was looking for a gun that had an intact working rear sight, and I got what I was looking for. And it's a really cool gun. So anyway, hope you enjoy it, guys. It's a neat piece of history. Um, this is a gun that would have been shot uh, anytime in the late 1800s uh, on, into, um, on into the time that the 3040 Crag and the bolt action took over. Um, and that was going to be like late 1890s, 1893, 1895. Somewhere in there is when the 3040 took over, if I recall. And I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. <laughs> and then after that, the, the Springfield rifle, the 1903 and 1906 Springfields, uh, and the idea of a necked cartridge, a high-velocity necked cartridge, really took off, and we never looked back. So, But it's kind of a neat, neat gun. And um, whether it was any good as a military rifle, I don't know. But it's a cool gun to shoot, and it's a cool gun to own. And it's a very unique action type that... Um, really doesn't exist anymore. So kind of a fun gun. And I still think it's just so cool that we have a gun that um, that has such an adjustable rear sight with it. Because uh, nowadays, I mean, rear sights are nowhere near this adjustable. And I've got to think the precision machining that went into this 140 years ago. How cool it was for someone to be able to make something this precise 140 years ago. So anyway, there we are, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please like and subscribe, and uh, you know we we will have a video of me shooting this sometime this summer. I'm gonna get it out to the range and actually take the camera with me and video shooting it. We're gonna pattern it at 100 yards and and see what we can do with some hand loads. I've got some hand loads just for this 500 grain black powder level hand loads. So um, 
yeah, we'll see how it does. Guys, thanks for watching. We appreciate the support. See you around.